Welcome back, and today we're going to start a new chapter, which is the second principle of thermodynamics. Okay, so why do we need a second part to the first part if we were able to solve a multitude of problems with the first one. So something we kind of did not mention directly is that the first principle of thermodynamics actually implies two things that are not all the time true. So let's see which are those two things. So let's say for a cycle which is Basically, a cycle is a series of processes. This is not really a random one. I do this is a classic one, but really you should do any figure as long as you start from one point and you end up to the same point. This will be a cycle. So let's write the uh, first principle of thermodynamics for a cycle. So let's say we have heat minus work will be equal to the change in energy. Okay? So in this case, what will happen to the change in energy? We know the change in energy is made out of change of internal energy must change of kinetic energy must change in potential energy. If we start at one point and we end up to the same point, what will be the change in energy? Let's say we start some velocity v1, we end up to the same velocity, change in kinetic energy will be zero. We start at one high, we go through the different points, uh, states in the process, we end up to the same point, the change in kinetic energy will be zero. Let's say we start from a a certain internal energy u1, u2, u3, u4, we end up at u1, the total change will be zero. So what's happening over here is that the total change in energy will be zero, and in such case, what we have is that w equal q, or is the same thing, Q equal to W. That's actually the only reason why they did the change here on the sign convention. So what is the meaning of this? All right, so what does that mean? Let's say we have our system over here. Okay, and this would be a closed or open system. That shouldn't matter. So we have here our system. So if this equation is true, that means what? That if we have, this is generally called a hot reservoir, that provides heat to the system, the system should be able to create, in this case work, equal to the same amount of energy that you put in. So that would mean that this system is basically 100% efficient. You can transform all the heat into work, okay? All the work could be transformed back, back into heat. So what happened is that really, in real life, we know that nothing is perfect and nothing is 100%. For example, cars, uh, and not 100% efficient, I'm pretty sure you know that, they're actually about about 30% or a little bit less. So why is that? It's because any engine, any system, will always work between two temperature reservoirs. One hot and a cold reservoir. Okay, so it will be Q hot, Q cold. 
so that the efficiency of the system will always be lower than one than one or one hundred percent. So what could be a general definition for efficiency? We, we, will, we will use that for all the different type of cycles. So one definition could be desire output divided by desire input. That's actually a definition of your book. I like to give more like, what are you trying to get out of the system? What are you trying to achieve? And what do you need to put into the system? That's more the way I like it. So for example, for that system order, you can write down that efficiency, we use the letter eta for the thermal efficiency. So I will write it on the next page. Will be equal to what? What are we trying to obtain over here? We're trying to create work and in order to create work, what do we need to do? We need to put heat Q sub H. Now, the amount of work you can obtain will be equal to what? To the change in temperature between the Q hot and the cold reservoir. Okay? So this will be now divided by QH, meaning that the thermal efficiency we can get will be 1 minus QC over Q hot. In this case, the letter F over here is the thermal efficiency. Okay. So this is the first thing that the first law could not do. First law is actually saying that the system will always be 100%, but we know that because any type of system always will have to work between two temperature reservoirs, the efficiency can never be equal to 100% and will be equal to this ratio for type of uh, system that want to generate power. So this, this will be like power cycles systems. So maybe Let's write it down. We can say first principle implies that A cycle will always have a one hundred percent efficiency, and that's because we can write down. Q equal W or W equal Q. However, it is known that this is not possible because All cycles must operate between two temperature reservoirs. Okay, as we did on the previous video. So now I'm going to repeat a little bit what we just said in the, in the first uh, page. But, you know, learning is a lot of repetition. 
So the first type of cycle we can have is what is known as a power cycle. So what is the function of the power cycle? It is to generate power. So again, we're going to have here hot reservoir. That will put heat into the power cycle. Now we know that any type of cycle or engine will always operate between a hot and a cold temperature reservoir. Okay. And this will be able to create work. Okay. And we just saw on the previous page that in such a case, the efficiency will be equal to what? Well, what are we trying to obtain is to generate work. What do we need to put into the system? Q sub H. And we know the amount of work will be equal to the change in heat between the two temperature reservoirs of the QH. So we had that the efficiency was equal to 1 minus QC over QH. Again, you don't need to memorize this at all. Just remember that the efficiency is whatever you're trying to achieve divided by whatever you need, you need to provide in order to achieve that. So this will be one type of cycle, power cycle. Another type of cycle we can have will be a refrigeration cycle. So in this case, what do we need to do? We can do a similar figure over here. This would be our refrigeration cycle. So what are we trying to achieve on the refrigeration cycle? We're not trying to provide power. If you use your condition, what happens? You're trying to, this time, put cold, refrigerate your system. Okay? In order to do that, you need to plug it to the outlet. So you need to provide work or power. And now, since we know that this type of cycle, or any type of cycle must operate between two temperature reservoirs, we'll have over here a hot reservoir QH. So again, what will be the efficiency? In uh, your textbook, they don't call it efficiency, they call it C or P, which is coefficient. of performance and if you look actually at your machine of uh, air conditioning maybe it's located in the garage or in a closet inside the house they should have a COP and let's see what that means so for the COP of the refrigeration what are you trying to achieve you're trying to put cold into the system okay now what do you need to provide work so basically the COP for the refrigeration cycle will be equal to Q sub C divided by Q hot minus Q cold and we'll do a problem later on but you will see that this efficiency over here for the power cycle, this one is always between 0 and 1, but this one will always be higher than 1. Okay? So generally, the coefficient of performance for a refrigeration system is of the order, I don't know, 2.5, I think, to 5 or 6. Okay? But we'll do a problem later on. And the last step of cycle we can have is what is called the heat pump cycle. So now we go to the heat pump
cycle. So again, it's always the same figure. That's why you don't need really to uh, memorize anything. Hit bump. So this time will be a hit bump. You try to remove the heat from the system. So we look at the top of this figure. In order to achieve that, you need to provide power or work. And you know that any type of cycle must operate between two temperature reservoirs. So you will have here your your, your cold reservoir. So now, okay, that's why you don't need to memorize anything. What will be the coefficient of performance for the heat pump? What are we trying to achieve? Remove heat. Q sub H. What do we need to put into the system in order to achieve that? Work or power. So this will mean that the coefficient of performance for the heat pump will be equal to what? Q heat divided by, sorry, Q hot divided by Q hot minus Q cold. And that's it. Okay. So this is basically the end. I'm just going to add one thing. The statement of that you have a cycle that always must operate between two temperature reservoirs is what is known as the Kelvin Planck statement. So you're going to have here your hot reservoir. Here you can have your Called reservoir. Okay? And actually, you will see that what could happen is what? Let's say you have one power cycle, that would be this one, so it's getting heat from the hot reservoir and losing heat to the cold reservoir. And now this one could do what? Can receive cold from the cold reservoir so this will be either a refrigeration or heat pump cycle and give over here heat so this is a power cycle so the power cycle does what generate powers and this one needs power so what you can do actually is that you see that the power generated by the power cycle is used by the other machine okay but what's important over here is that the Kelvin Planck statement says that any type of cycle will always operate between two temperature reservoirs. Okay, so this will be so the first limitation of uh, so I talk a lot and now just say that. Uh, limitations of first principle of thermodynamics will be what? So we know that for a cycle the first principle of thermodynamics, you can write it as Q equal to W. Okay? So we have seen that the first limitation really is that cycles cannot be 100% efficient 
which is indicated by the equal sign because a cycle must operate between two temperature reservoirs. Okay, and the second one, so it's again now over here, is that since you can write down Q equal W or W equal Q, that means what? Directly means that the equal sign, you can write it, uh, that this equation is true, Q equal W or W equal to Q. So that this equation is correct and true from that is B directional if you want. Okay, you can either all the heat will be transformed into work or the work will be transformed into heat. And this is not always true. And the easiest example, even though it's not 100% correct from the thermodynamics point of view, but it's very easy to understand, you can always transform the water into ice and you can go back from the ice back to the water. Okay, that's very easy to understand. So that equal sign over here, if you want, will be B direction. However, let's say you burn a piece of wood, you burn a log, so you burn it, you're going to get ashes. But now from the ashes, you cannot get back the, the whole piece of wood or the log. Okay? So that means that some cycles, some processes will be reversible, like the water going from liquid to ice, but some of them will not be reversible. They are called irreversible like going from wood to ashes, you cannot go back from ashes to wood. So the second limitation is what is called here, some cycles are reversible, meaning that you can go from one state to the other, or more precisely means that you don't lose anything in the process but others are not and are called e re so basically in this first video I demonstrated the first one uh, we're going to do some problem for the first one and then I will demonstrate how we can overcome this limitation and really uh, the seven part we introduce the new concept of entropy which is the one the one the one thing that will help us to resolve the problem of reversible or irreversible all right, thank you for your attention.